and today, maybe Ascension Thursday, be here in Santee, I guess, not too far from San Diego, California. And the epistle for this Ascension Thursday, the Ascension Mass, is taken from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1. The former book, the former treatise I made of Theophilus, of all things that which Jesus began to do and to teach, until the day on which giving commandments by the Holy Ghost to the apostles whom he had chosen, he was taken up, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, by many proofs, for forty days, appearing to them, and speaking of the kingdom of God. And eating together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem but uh, should wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard, saith he, by my mouth. For John indeed baptized with water, and you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Yet therefore who were come together asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? But he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the moments which the Father hath put in his own power, you shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost coming upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria, and even to the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had said these things, while they looked on, he was raised up, and the cloud received him out of their sight. And while they were beholding him going up to heaven, behold, two men stood by them in white garments, who also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand you looking up to heaven? This Jesus, who is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come as you have seen him going into heaven. And the Gospel? Taking that according to St. Mark, chapter 16. At that time Jesus said to the, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were at table, and he upbraided them with their incredulity, and their hardness of heart, because he did not believe them who had had seen him after he was risen again. And he said to them, Go ye into the whole world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, and if they shall drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay their hands upon the sick, and they shall recover. And the Lord Jesus, after he had spoken to them, was taken up into heaven, and sit at the right hand of God. But they going preached everywhere, the Lord working with all, and confirming the word with the signs that followed. Those were the words of today's Holy Gospel. Father, Father, there would only be at the end of the gospel today. Sir, the head and sea will come over. He will take his extinguisher and put out the Paschal candle. And then after this Mass, the Paschal candle that was lit on a holy Easter night, the vigil, formerly a very massive candle, huge candle. With the, and that candle is a symbol of Christ. But every year, what do we do with that candle? We put the year on it. So there was a, one candle had 1357 on it. This year is 2020. The year 2020. And, that there can, and, in, and every year this cross is placed upon it. The grains of incense are put inside of it. And on this day, the candle is extinguished and we hide it. And why is it hidden? It is hidden because that candle is a symbol. And the light on top of that candle is the light of Jesus Christ that was lit in the very beginning of time. When God breathed the light into the angels and made them creatures of light, and He gave them supernatural grace. He breathed light into Adam and gave him the grace and the infused knowledge. And he breathed light into that fire after the sin of Adam. And he breathed light into the fire that was lit by Moses when the great sacrifice of the Old Testament was made. 
And now this light is lit again in the New Testament, but this light must be carried. So the candle is taken away, and the light must be carried. Now we can see, for instance, look at the world. You can say there are many things the world has in it. Now one of them is located in Singapore, located in Malaysia. It's called the rubber tree. The rubber trees are in Asia, and they, and they discovered, English discovered a few years ago, that if you take the bark off this tree and mix it around, make a few little mixtures with it, you can create something called rubber. Now, supposing you, if you came down to this earth, an angel or a Martian came down to this earth and said, show me what is the most powerful thing on earth. It can carry anything. Well, I'll show you what it is. It's rubber. If you look at this thing, it bends, it's black, that's color of a priest cassock, black. This blends, it's black, you know, and with this we can carry anything. So you look at that rubber and you find out it bends, it's not very strong. And it, what can you carry with that? It isn't very strong at all. It dries out, it gets wet, it rots. And yet, with this rubber, if you add something else to it, and you put it inside of a tire, you can carry anything. And what is it that's put inside of it? You have to take this rubber and you have to make it form a circle. Then you have to take air and put it inside of it and you can carry anything. Now consider Lucifer and the devils. When our Lord Jesus Christ went up into heaven on this day, and he said, not many days hence, the Holy Ghost is going to come. And you are going to be a witness to me until the ends of the earth. You know, until that moment, the devil was worried sick. He was very worried. Because Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. And Jesus Christ has shown his great power over death. And he's appearing and appearing and appearing to all his friends. And he's strengthening their faith. And certainly, hell is finished. But on Ascension Thursday... Forty days after Jesus Christ rose from the dead, what happened? He told his apostles, now I'm leaving, leaving. I am going up to heaven. I told you I was leaving before, before Good Friday. I came back in three days. Now I'm leaving. You're not going to see me for 2,000 years. I am leaving. And I am not going to come back until the day of judgment. When I told Caiaphas on Holy Good Friday morning, I told Caiaphas, you Caiaphas, you are going to see the Son of Man coming in power and majesty. You will see me. Right now I stand in front of you with blood. I stand in front of you being judged. I stand in front of you being condemned to death. I am the one in charge, not you. And you, Caiaphas, the high priest, you will see the Son of Man coming in power and majesty. That's what Jesus Christ told him. And he's going to come in power and majesty with his body that is exactly six feet tall. And his body is going to come with perfection right back to this earth, coming from east and to west. And he shall judge the living and the dead. What about the 2,000 years in between? Approximately 2,000 years. We're already 2,000 years after the ascension. And another 13 years, it'll be 2,000 years since the ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. He ascended 33 years in the year 33 AD. 2,000 years later will be 13 years from now. And we know that around 2,000 years, that he's going to be away. And consider Lucifer on that day, on the ascension Thursday, and all the devils, you're trying to tell me that this rubber is going to be the witness of Christ. These very solid men, you can, you can grab your hand and twist them. You grab a piece of wood, it won't bend. You grab these guys and you can twist them any way you want. You're trying to tell me that this flexible rubber is going to be what's going to be the witness of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth? 
But what does our Lord say? Not many days hence, the Holy Ghost will come and He will fill you with His Spirit. Just like you don't explain to a Martian about air in a tire. A tire is useless for carrying things. When the air goes out of the tire, you have a flat tire. And the rubber is useless. The rubber within seconds is ripped to pieces. If you go 80 miles an hour down the road, and the air goes out of the tire, at that minute, the rubber is destroyed. It is ripped apart. And if you keep trying to drive with it, you will destroy your vehicle. You'll destroy everything. And you won't be able to drive anymore. And our Lord Jesus Christ was explaining to these men, you are going to be my witnesses. And not many days hence, the Holy Ghost is going to come on the day of Pentecost. He is going to enter into the side of your weak flesh. And he is going to make you a witness to me from the ends of the earth. So our Lord goes up into heaven on Ascension Thursday, and it is most important that he travels up into heaven. And what is he going to do when he arrives in heaven? There are many duties that he has, many things that he needs to do. He has not completed his work. For the Lord Jesus Christ came down to this earth, he died on the cross for our sins. He taught those apostles for three and a half years. But what did he tell them before he left? He said, it is necessary for you that I go. He also said, up until this moment, hitherto, you have not asked anything in my name. But from now on, you must ask in my name. And whatever you ask in my name, it shall be given unto you. And the Father will give you whatever you ask when you ask in my name. When you ask in my name, you'll call me back to this earth in spirit. You'll call me back to this earth. And I will make sure that what you ask is fulfilled. One such man asked that mountains be moved, St. Gregory the Wonder Worker. And the mountain was moved by the command of St. Gregory. And then also, St. Mark tells us, the disciple of St. Peter, who wrote his gospel, he says, and they know him by the signs that followed. You will preach me to the ends of the earth. We are supposed to be the carriers of Jesus Christ until the end of time. And we have to remember that every baptized Catholic, and especially the priest and the bishop, but every baptized Catholic is like unto rubber. Rubber is very powerful if it is filled with air, and the air doesn't get out. That's one reason why down the last 2,000 years, what is the duty of the Catholic bishop? What's the duty of the Catholic priest? I want to protect you to carry the faith to the next generation, next generation. You must make sure the faith rolls from one generation to the next, just like a tire. You can carry the entire um, kingdoms on top of you if you keep the air sealed inside of that tire. And what is this air that's sealed inside of our, of our tire? It is the Holy Roman Catholic faith, the 12 articles of the creed, the teachings of our ancestors, the teachings of the fathers of the church, that must fill us up. The teaching by itself flies through the air and carries nothing. The rubber by itself, it is able to carry nothing. But take the teaching and seal it inside of rubber and take that teaching and make sure that not one drop of it leaks out. And you can put an infinite weight on top of it and it will carry it. It will carry it. We have to recognize as we travel through each generation, the devil was not at all afraid of the rubber. He was not at all afraid of those 12 men, Matthias taking the place of Judas. This is what you're going to put up against me, said Lucifer. I will defeat them and destroy them most easily. But what happened? Thir ten days later, the Holy Ghost entered inside of them with the Blessed Virgin Mary, and they became impregnable and unconquerable. And God has decided that inside of the weak humanity, there should be this holy faith. And what is the Lord Jesus Christ doing at the ascension? He goes up into heaven. And when he arrives in heaven, he is interceding with us to the Father. As the Father has sent me, I also send you. Now it's time for you to go. And so our Lord sends his apostles to the ends of the earth. Men preach the gospel to every creature. This is important to understand against the heresy and the wickedness of the Protestants. Preach the gospel to every creature. Everything must worship God. Hence we have sacred stones, which is the altar stone, and the stones that build the church, and the stone of the altar. We have sacred wood, 
that is used for the making of holy statues and used for the construction of, of, the, of the, the furniture of the house of God. And we have sacred fabric which comes from, from, uh, from the plants by which made are made vestments and we give worship to God. And all the animals are blessed by God also. We bless each of the animals and each of them made to worship God. And then every man must worship God and fire and heat must worship God. Exactly what was commanded by the three young men in the fiery furnace. And therefore every creature must praise God. We have fire and wax that praises God. The bee is involved in the mass when she made, she made the wax. And the fire is involved in the mass. And the wood is involved in the mass and the crucifix. And stone is involved in the mass. And all living creatures are involved in the mass. Because what must a priest do? He must preach the gospel to every single creature. And we look down the lives of the saints, they have preached the gospel to the creatures. They have commanded the water to obey them. When Saint uh, Raymond of Pettifart was held back on an island, he went across the water. He walked across the water, and the water obeyed him. And when, 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 when the storms were going to sink ships, many times the water obeyed the saints, and the signs will follow until the ending of times. <laughs> and so they're, they're, the whole world must be preached to, and we must preach the gospel to every creature. We are now in an age where every creature has been turned away from God, and every creature is being used for selfishness and for the devil. And we must bring back every creature to God. Bring back the blessings of God to every creature. And the Lord Jesus Christ made that command to his apostles on Ascension Thursday. Now what does he do when he goes up into heaven? He said what he was going to do. And what he said was, I am going to prepare a place for those that love me. He is preparing a place, preparing a home for those that love him. We are here to know, love, and serve God, and by this means to save our souls, so that we will be happy with him in heaven. And he makes a place to prepare that place for us in heaven. He is going to greet us and receive us and bring us into the kingdom of heaven. He's going up there to do that work. He also wants to see us carry him by the power of the Holy Ghost. Because remember, God is three in one. The Father, the Creator, the Son, the Redeemer, and the Holy Ghost, the breath and life and sanctifier of our holy church. And he is, he is, he is there to bring us, bring us to him and bring him to us, bring heaven to us. In any case, we started a bit late here, but we are at a happy Ascension Thursday, this great day, and also we have the privilege of receiving the First Holy Communion, a First Holy Communion today. Remember to receive our Lord the first time, we receive our Lord on the tongue, and receive our Lord into the heart, and make sure that it remains there all of our days, all of your days. So in any case, we'll close with that, and God bless you all, and the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.